Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Monday, November 9th, 2020 <clears throat> and I am pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, November 10th. Futures currently are slightly higher on Monday evening as the NASDAQ tries to rebound from one of its worst relative strength days of 2020. We saw a lot of money rotating into many of the Dow uh, components, many of the S&P 500 stocks, but out of a lot of the uh, tech-laden NASDAQ issues. Um, we're going to take a look at that in just a bit. First, let's go through the agenda. Uh, we will start off, go into the uh, daily market recap from Monday. Then uh, take a look at talking technically. I'm going to go into the hourly charts of both the Spider and the QQQ. Then uh, I'm going to do a segment called reversing candles. There were a ton of those on uh, Monday, I think that could be a problem for the market in the near term. I think we go higher later, um, maybe just a few days uh, down the road, maybe a couple of weeks down the road. But I do think in the short term, very near term, next couple of days, I think the market could be in uh, for some trouble based on the way we finished today. We'll go through that during the reversing candle segment. Uh, I'll take a look at chart lists. I'm going to go through my strong earnings chart list. And uh, in addition to the reversing candles that I show you, uh, I'll show you a number of companies on our strong earnings chart list that also uh, experienced some issues on Monday. Then uh, earnings spotlight, some more uh, decent sized companies after the bell, we'll go through those and then we'll wrap up with the three you must see. Before I get into any of that though, I do want to point you over to earningsbeats.com. Uh, here on the left side of the page, you can see an area where you can sign up for our free newsletter. Just type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. You can unsubscribe at any time. There's no credit card required. We'd love to have you. And uh, it is mostly an educational newsletter, some trading opportunities. We focus mostly on relative strength, earnings, and those types of things. Uh, over on the right-hand side of the page, you can see our portfolio performance that we do track daily. It was not a good day on Monday. For our portfolios, we have a lot of growth stocks, a lot of stocks on the NASDAQ that have been leaders in 2020. And most stocks that were leading in 2020 did not have a good day on Monday. And uh, so our portfolios certainly reflect that. But still, even with a rough day, you can see our model portfolio well out in front of the S&P 500, both, both in the current quarter and also since inception. And uh, uh, the aggressive portfolio today got hit pretty good. And we actually fell behind the S&P 500 for the quarter, although we do still uh, have a pretty hefty lead uh, since the inception. Income portfolio had a rough day. This one has been struggling on a relative basis even since inception. And then finally, strong AD portfolio, which also had a rough day, but has, still has a commanding lead over the S&P 500, both the current quarter and since inception. Uh, if you want to check out the portfolios, take a look at what's inside. Um, download them into your account if you're a Stock Charts Extra or Pro member. All you have to do is sign up for our free 30-day um, trial to our service. Um, it's, you do uh, have to pay $7, but it gets refunded to you within a week. So net over 30 days, it's free and uh, gives you an opportunity to um, take a look at how we approach the market. The other thing that it would do is it does get you into our top 10 stocks webinar on Thursday, November 19th. That's where we pick the 10 stocks, equal weighted stocks that go into each portfolio. So this is a good time to check out the service. Uh, you'll have 30 days at no cost and you'll be able to see exactly what we do with our portfolios. Um, again, 10 days from now on Thursday, November 19th. All right, let's take a look at what happened on Monday. It was a pretty strange day. Um, first, Pfizer came out in the morning, said that they do have a vaccine 90% effective, which is way above what uh, a lot of the experts were looking for from the vaccines. Um, many experts, I think, looking for about 75% effectiveness. Um, Dr. Fauci has even gone on the record to say 50, 55% would be acceptable. And Pfizer came out and said 90%. So the market really responded well to that. Uh, Dow futures shot higher. Uh, the Dow opened around 1,700 points higher. The uh, S&P 500 followed suit, not quite to the same extent, 
on a percentage basis, but still very strong. And then the NASDAQ also gapped up. But the problem was all of the indices were selling off later in the day. So the Dow, while <clears throat> I think going into the day, probably anybody, everybody would have accepted 800 point gain. But when you open 1700 up, 800 point gain doesn't look so good. And you can see that was a, a reversing candle off of that a um, little bit of a shooting star where you gap up, move higher, and then come back down. The S&P 500, very similar. We had that breakout above 3,600, and then we came back down, closed at 3,550. The prior high close was 3,580. So we had that easily during the day and then came back down and closed below it. And when I see these false breakouts like this, that normally is a short-term warning sign. And when it occurs on the kind of volume that we saw on Monday, that is just additional confirmation that uh, we should probably be careful. Unless we can take out those highs for Monday, the intraday highs, I think we've probably put in a short-term top, maybe intermediate term. I wouldn't be shocked if we went back down and tested these recent lows. I think that's a possibility. I'm not calling for it, but I do think that's a possibility. I think you do need to be a little uh, cautious here in the near term. The NASDAQ, uh, opened up and was above 12,000, came back down, closed at 11,713, and finished down 181 points for the day after being up significantly earlier in the day. So this was not a good look. Uh, we didn't get the all-time high on the NASDAQ. We actually were a little higher on that September, early September high. But we did clear the October high intraday and then failed and came back down below it. So I don't know that we're quite out of the woods just yet, even though we had a strong rally last week, got off to a strong start this morning. Just don't like the way we finished. And I'll show you in a bit, but the way the spider and the QQQ have been trading during this rally is a bit concerning. But again, I'll talk about that in just a minute. The S&P 400 mid cap also breaking out, but closing back down near the low. And small caps, very similar. Went up over 1,000 today, but came back down, closed at 970. Uh, did make the breakout on the close, as did the S&P 400 mid cap but still finishing weak after an uptrend. Um, not a good look there at all. Energy, financials, uh, just craziness to the upside. Uh, anything that was not working in 2020 worked today. Anything that's been working throughout 2020 did not work today. That was almost the theme. Everything got flipped on its head. Um, whatever you were expecting or everything that's been happening in 2020, the exact opposite reminded me of an episode on Seinfeld where uh, George always does everything opposite. Uh, that's what the market did today. Everything you would have expected it to do based on what's happened in 2020, it did the opposite. Uh, but anyway, energy gained 14% today. So I've been looking to try and get through the 20 day. Not only did we get through the 20 day, but we soared above the 50 day. So really strong action in energy today. I would expect a little bit of short-term profit taking, but hey, maybe we, we're, we've been so overbought, maybe we'll get a little bit of a run here in energy. Financials, look at all the struggles we've had trying to get through about 25 and a half, 26. We closed at 27.01, up over 8% on the XLF. Energy and financials, two of the worst performers of 2020, caught fire today as a result of that vaccine announcement. To the downside, well, one of the groups that's been working, Communication services uh, moving up. Looked like it had a nice little cup. I think with uh, futures up, I would have been expecting a breakout. We did uh, gap up a little bit, but then failed. Came back down, closed below the low or below yesterday's low and uh, did manage to uh, drop almost 1%. So communication services very weak today. The uh, hotels and lodging REITs uh, had a superb day, up 30%. Up 30% one day, very strong. Challenging that junior high, couldn't quite get through it uh, on a closing basis, but definitely challenged it um, and then pulled back, but still up 30% on the day. The exact opposite though, on recreational products. Recreational products, after opening up just a little bit lower, sold off all day long. Look at the heavy volume and maybe more importantly, check out the accumulation distribution line on recreational products. It topped back over the summer and it has been in a steady decline now for over three months. So recreational products, and that, and that was going down even when the prices were trying to come back up. 
So not exactly confirmation, the type of confirmation that you're looking for on a rally. And um, on Monday, you can see a lot of selling taking place in the recreational products area. All right, 10-year treasury yield, um, big move up, just like the overall market. If you were following back in June, you know this big run up coincided with a lot of the value stocks being bid up, a lot of the airlines, cruise lines, and so forth. Same thing happened again today. Uh, this was a big move up in the 10-year treasury yield and it accompanied all of those beaten down areas to the upside. We did actually close above that prior high close and uh, intraday, we took out the high as well. So 10-year treasury yield does certainly appear to be in an uptrend. And that overall is good for equities. The bigger question, though, is where does the money go in equities? Where does it rotate to? And that's what uh, I'm going to be looking at here over the next couple of weeks, trying to get a better sense of where that money is rotating to and what looks good and what's starting to show relative strength and outperformance. That's going to be very important as we go forward. All right, uh, there are no economic reports of any significance due out on Tuesday. So probably not going to be much of an impact from any economic reports uh, in the bond market and on the treasury yield. So we'll see how it trades mostly just based on technicals. And that should point to um, the possibility of moving higher, at least remaining in this uptrend. All right, let's move on to talking technically. I wanted to pull up this uh, spider chart this is an hourly chart. And if you noticed uh, throughout the past week or so, when we've been moving up, we've been moving up at the open or in the first hour or two. So you can see back on November 2nd, gap up, then we move lower. November 3rd, gap up, first two hours up, then we move lower. November 4th, first three hours up, then we move lower. November 5th, first two hours up, sideways. And uh, the 6th on Friday, mostly sideways. And then we gap up again um, on the 9th, Monday, and selling the rest of the day. So I'm not liking the fact that we're selling into the afternoon. And the way you can really see it is you can, you can see the price action moving lower over the past four weeks. And you can see the AD line moving lower. But then here, as we start to go up, the AD line starts to rise. And then over the past three or four days, prices have kept going up. But look at that AD line. Now, this is just on an hourly chart. And I usually look at it more on a daily chart. But it at least does kind of paint a picture of not getting the, the type of confirmation that we want from this action to the upside. Uh, you don't want to see the AD line putting in a new low for this entire period when you've got prices at a new high. And so, and that's what we had. So not good action there. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out too is as we moved up here in the morning, we had a negative divergence at first. Uh, we did keep going up a little bit. So it's hard to tell if we actually broke above that prior high or about the same, but price action was higher and it doesn't look to me like the PPO went higher. So I'd say at a minimum, maybe we got a little bit of a slight negative divergence and then the selling kicked in. Look at the volume, especially in that final hour big move to the downside. The QQQ, I think you're going to see a pretty clear negative divergence here. As we moved up earlier this morning, look at that PPO going down. And it just couldn't last. We couldn't hold on to the 20 period moving average. I think we're going to get a 50 period test. I think we're going to go back down to about this 282, 283 level. And then we're going to see what the NASDAQ is made of. If we can hold 282, 283 start to turn back up. I'd feel a little bit more comfortable about this advance. If we can't, and we go back down below that 50 hour moving average and below this low, then I think we've got more selling in store. Perhaps as low as this double bottom back October 30th, November 2nd. We'd have, have to wait and see. Um, the other thing to watch is to see on a relative basis what the QQQ is doing versus the S&P 500. So QQQ versus a spider. I'm gonna go down here. I'm just gonna change this to a line chart. And you can see we fell to the lowest level uh, in the past month on this QQQ versus spider chart. So uh, 
it's all a little bit of selling at the end of Friday and then, uh, or well, actually, no, at the end of Friday, we were up here. And then we started today with a big drop, tried to rally early in the early action. And then you can see finished on the low of the day. So the NASDAQ, the QQQ relative to the spider uh, finished at its weakest and its lowest level since uh, all the way back in, well, let's go back, find out when the last time we were this low, go back two months. Uh, yeah, you can see it was on the selling that took place in the first half of September. So when we hit that low in September, uh, we still got a little bit of room here to go to get down to that level. But I would be more concerned about the NASDAQ if it can't hold on to this relative support level from September. So that'll be something to watch, not just on Tuesday, but in the days ahead. All right, moving on, let's move on to reversing candles. So the first thing I could do, let's go over here and let me just show you. Um, I was looking in the predefined scans. And if you go to the predefined scans and, and scroll down to the candlestick patterns, um, you'll see, okay, bullish engulfing, there were only 27 across all the various exchanges. Um, if you go down to bearish engulfing, you'll see there were 412. If you go to shooting star, 443. Filled black candles, 2,444 filled black candles. Now, a filled black candle, a black candle means... Um, if, if you finish with a with either a black filled candle or a black hollow candle, then you've closed above the prior day's close. So you're closed today. It means you finished higher. If you didn't know anything else happened during the day, you closed higher than where you were the prior day. When you get a filled candle, though, black filled candle, it means that you gapped up and then sold off. So your close is below the open, but it's still above the prior day's close. Okay. So you're sitting at X, you gap up above X, you come back down, you close above X, but you did close below the open. So you open high and you sell off. That's how you get a filled black candle. And off of an uptrend with heavy volume, that can establish market tops, or at least short-term market tops. Um, now, red hollow candles, that would be uh, the flip of the filled black candles. They tend to mark bottoms. Um, after gap downs. So I thought what we do is just run through some of these candles. So the black candles, let me go through and, and give you some of these uh, candles. We're going to start off with uh, Teradyne. So here's your uptrend and look at that big black candle there on the top. And I mean, you can go back and look. I mean, here was one where you made the big move up, big black candle. This one, the volume was very heavy. The heavier the volume, the more bearish it is in my view, because you're selling your, your, Selling from the open, you're closing below the open, and if it's on heavy volume, then it's just a, a signal of distribution as opposed to accumulation. Uh, the next one, SAIA, it's a trucker. Um, and off of this nice uptrend going up about six, seven days in a row, big black candle, heavier volume. Now, this is not a heavily traded stock, but I still thought for... Um, Illustrative purposes, it made sense to bring this up and show you. LRCX, this is LAM Research. Six, seven days in a row, reversing black candle. Volume picked up, not the heaviest on the chart, but not a light day either. Uh, Visteon, uh, VC, moving up, big reversal, volume much heavier. Now, again, there were tons of these all over the place, over 2,000 of them. So... This was definitely um, something that we saw a lot of today, but that tends to mark tops. So that's why I think we have to be a little bit more careful here in the near term. Then they had the bearish engulfing candles. Let's show, show you some of these. Sun power. Now, the difference between a black candle and a bearish engulfing candle is that you gap up, but then you come all the way back down and close below the prior candle body. So you completely engulf it. Remember on the black candles, you gap up, you come back down, you're still finishing above the prior candle. You go to a red filled bearish engulfing candle and you can see the difference there. You go all the way back down. 
Now on a stock like this, SunPower, you see higher prices, lower PPO, that tells me negative divergence. And when I get a negative divergence and a reversing candle, uh, I usually exit stage left. I don't take any chances because a lot of times, instead of just going down and testing the 20, sometimes you go down, <clears throat> excuse me, and test that 50 day moving average. And that would be all the way down between 14, and $15. So I just don't like to take that chance if I'm trading. All right, uh, another bearish engulfing candle. How about Scientific Games, SGMS? Gapped up, was trading well over 40, came all the way back down, closed at 34.75 and engulfed that prior candle. Uh, others, let's see here, IRTC, one of my favorite stocks, but again, it's got a little cup. This could just be a little handle, comes back to the moving averages, we'll see. But we were in breakout mode early today and failed fully engulfing that prior day's candle. It certainly looks to me like we'll see a little bit of short-term weakness here. Um, SNBR, this is sleep number. Look at that bearish engulfing candle. Traded up to 72 this morning. Came all the way down, closed at 61.61 and lost the 20-day moving average with a negative divergence in play. That tells me we're probably going to test that 50 day. Wouldn't be surprised to see 55 on sleep number. Last one here can show you the QQQ. Look at that bearish engulfing candle on the QQQ. Right at this gap resistance, right at this top here in October. So we already know we have gap, or we already have resistance there, both price and gap. And then we get the reversing candle on top of that with heavy volume. I mean, I, we could just continually or continue to be sideways consolidating. We'll have to see if we can uh, hold on to the moving averages. So we would be trending. If we hold the 20 and then turn back up and move up, take out that September high, then I think you start to play this market as a trending market. But if we fail to hold these moving averages, just like we've seen for the past two, two and a half months, this just tells us the market is trendless. It is consolidating. So that would be the thing I'd be watching. Watch these moving averages to see if the QQQ can hold. Shooting star candles. See what these look like. So this is uh, a lot of times looks to me like an upside down hammer. So hammers normally on the pullback, you know, you get the, the reversing uh, long tail to the downside, then you close near the top part of the, the candle. This is the opposite. You gap up, you trade up intraday and come back down and close near the low. So it's like an upside down hammer. Don't like these kinds of candles. They tend to mark tops. Uh, giving you another one or two here. Here's mid gapping up, upside down hammer. That looks like possible top. And the last one is on semiconductor, same thing. Moving up off an uptrend, gap up and failure and heavy volume. Last one, the red hollow candles. Let's see, UPWK. Uh, I actually like this, this stock quite a bit. Big move up with earnings, came back down, looked like it was breaking down, printed a hollow candle, nice little hammer. Uh, this one still looks pretty good in my view. eBay, uh, hollow candle, tried to break down below these recent lows, but uh, turned around. We'll see if that continues to hold. And then Regeneron, also threatening this breakdown coming across here around the 540 area. See that uh, hollow candle and a reversal back to 567. All right, moving on to chart lists. What I wanna do in the chart list, um, I'm about to update again for our members, uh, but this just keeps track of companies, the strong earnings chart list keeps track of companies that beat uh, both revenues and earnings per share in their latest quarter. Um, they either look good technically or they're part of a group that looks good. There's usually something that I like about the chart um, and then it needs to be liquid. So I don't wanna put stocks in here that are illiquid. Uh, so that normally means at least a couple hundred thousand shares on average. Uh, but as you see, I'm going to just walk you through a couple of these real quick. But here's Fabernet. Look at that. Looks like a black uh, reversing candle there. JD, big red filled candle. See if we can hold that 20 day moving average. NIU, third day in a row of filled red candles, closed below the 20 day. Agilent, big red candle off of this uptrend. AAP, tried to break out above these recent highs, black candle forms. 
Cree gapped up to 72 and a half, comes all the way back down to 65 and change. Big uh, bearish engulfing candle there. HD, I mean, you can kind of get the picture. Almost every chart has the same kind of setup. Look at Walmart gapping up, looked pretty good this morning. Came back down, bearish engulfing candle. LB has been a very hot stock in, uh, well, probably the last five or six months. Looks like another bearish engulfing candle at resistance. Lowe's been one of the stronger stocks in home improvements. Uh, back down, challenging key area of support. NVIDIA, bearish engulfing candle right at resistance. Uh, QIWI, black candle at the 50-day moving average. But it just seems like every one of these were closing near the low, so we got to be a little careful. All right, as far as earnings go, I'm just going to go over a couple of these with you real quick. One is Ring Central. This has been a stock that's been consolidating for a long time, but it has been a decent relative performer. It had a huge move up through May, and then since then on a relative basis versus its peers, been going sideways. The stock is up almost 5% after hours. Uh, it did beat on its bottom line, 26 cents versus 24. Um, but that was not the case on all stocks. Uh, one stock that uh, was getting hit a little bit after hours was Simon Property Group, part of the real estate sector that was uh, doing really well on Monday. Huge day here. You can see the stock up 27%. While they reported earnings, they're giving 7% back after hours. Stock reported earnings of $2.05. The market was expecting $2.25. So we'll pr probably be back into that mid-70 range tomorrow at the open, and we'll see where, where we go from there. The last one I want to mention is a company that was getting absolutely hammered after hours, and that is Beyond Meat. Um, the stock had been trending down below the 20, went up, tested it, big reversing candle on heavy volume today. And after the bell, they came out, they were expected to have a three cent profit. They lost 28 cents. Stock was down 22% after hours. So we're talking about 35 bucks, I think, or 33 bucks. Uh, 116, 117 is what I was looking at, which is below all of these lows. That is going to be an ugly open in the morning for Beyond Meat. We'll see if it opens above 120. I think it's got a chance maybe to hold there. If it opens below 120, I don't know. I think we're probably going to head down to the 110, maybe even all the way down to $90 to test this low. So uh, Beyond Meat, definitely set to struggle tomorrow. Uh, Live Ramp. RAMP also struggling after hours, even though they beat by 13 cents on their bottom line, came in at three cent profit. Um, market was expecting a 10 cent loss. Stock was still down 10% after hours. Got to be careful with just about anything these days. All right, uh, the three you must see. I want to just go over three companies that uh, did extremely well today. And this is where we're going to be looking for rotation. AXP, American Express, look at this break above that June high. Huge, huge day up 21%. And look at the volume coming in with a hollow candle. Lots of accumulation taking place in AXP. Next up, JP Morgan, another big move. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen JP Morgan uh, do anything like this. Stock up $14 today, breaking out above that June high. And again, very heavy volume. And then the last one, Boeing. Uh, and they're talking about maybe the Max Plane, uh, Max Plane being um, approved. Uh, perhaps within a week or so. And if that's the case, could be a one-two punch here. The stock had a really nice day today, up 14%. AD line's been horrible though. And you can see even after gapping up, unlike JP Morgan and American Express, no follow through on Boeing. So this one would worry me a little bit more than the other two, because other than the gap up, there really was no buying pressure, no net buying pressure. All right, that's it for me for Tuesday. I want to wish everybody a great day. I'll be back over at Earnings Beats on Wednesday at 9 a.m. for the next episode of Trading Places Live. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.